proprietarized version of open source, well, you could maybe try and pull the code out if you really ask nicely companies like Apple or Microsoft. You could say, okay, now please, you know, have some of your code that you have there in the network stack. And they might be able to give it to you, but they probably won't give it to you uh, because they don't have to because it's a BSD license. Um, and, and they might make modifications and all, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's not really open source either in both cases. The only place where it gets open source is when you can start to move things between platforms or when you can start to replace the proprietary software. If you're talking about uh, GNU slash Linux as a platform to replace Windows, this is where Microsoft cares because it harms their sales of licenses to people. Yeah, I think that plays into the, the whole um, opening developers' mindsets uh, because the assumption is if, if you're a proprietary company, regardless of your platform, if you're making proprietary software that's Photoshop or whatever, then invariably you're going to use your own proprietary data formats as well. And that all plays into the, the lock-in. So if you're creating, if you've got lots of PSD documents or dot .doc documents or whatever, they can't easily be um, be ported and opened on other tools. So all of that plays into the lock-in as well. Uh, and companies or projects that do open source tend to favor the more, more standard doc, uh, file formats um, like ODF or whatever, you know, they tend to do it in a more open way so that your data is not held hostage, which means that taken as part of a whole, um, they're, uh, they're, the stuff that you've created in those applications is not going to be a barrier to you switching uh, to Linux, to BSD, to OSX or whatever. Um, so it's, it's all an extra, it's not hooking into the, the whole the vendor lock-in thing that, that, the, that proprietary companies are desperate to keep a hold of. But on top of that, it's it, for developers, I mean, it's like the, the DRM thing. The people that sold the concept of DRM to record the, the recording industry and the publishing industry did it so well that they honestly believe that's the only thing that's going to save their souls. So they're pushing that every chance they can get regardless. Um, they've sold the idea too well. Now, the thing with developers, if they're, they're also being sold on the whole proprietary model that you must control all of your, quote, intellectual property, unquote, um, and do all your own file formats, pattern everything that isn't nailed down, and do it all locked in and all that, but that uh, doing that all in-house bumps up the cost. Uh, and you have to go after and you know, send takedown notices to the Pirate Bay and whoever for people who are sharing your stuff because you want to get the, the box off every license. Now, when, when developers grasp the concept of an open development model, an open source development model, that they can actually benefit from that and they can, it cu cuts their costs down uh, and it gets people, their own customers, their own people, the people they are making money from, are able to improve the product and make it better for them and get loyalty for being a good product and a good company. As soon as companies grasp hold of that concept and they start to realize, hey, this open source idea is a really good idea for us, then that's another another block that Microsoft have lost. If I could just add, just to sort of backtrack a little bit um, over this whole article that this uh, discussion has uh, stemmed from, um, and it's just my opinions on uh, some of the, some of the, some of the things because uh, I'm renowned for sitting on the fence and maybe playing devil's advocate a few times, but articles like this make me sort of quite firm on my beliefs and my opinions. Um, I think with the statements that Microsoft said about openness and being open to openness and loving the open source community, etc., and all the projects. I, I think open, but I'm talking about free, so. Sorry? I like to say the word open, yeah. that's free, and that's, that's intended, that's very, uh, yeah. intended. I, I, well, I, I think the whole, uh, I think the whole thing is absolutely preposterous. Um, I think free and open source software completely goes against the business model that, uh, Microsoft has, I believe, uh, Gordon just, uh, touched on in regards to proprietary software. I, if we're to believe the hype or the, the words that are used by companies like Microsoft when they're saying they are to embrace open source software in the community and, and things like that, 
is to believe that they're happy that there's alternatives to their proprietary packages that people are taking up and moving away from the proprietary solutions to open source. And it's, it's completely preposterous to me that people would believe that Microsoft would want uh, an open, uh, would celebrate open source software. I mean, are we saying Microsoft clap and applaud when everybody moves over to Linux from Windows? Are we saying that Microsoft raises a glass of wine every time somebody leaves open, uh, leaves Office and goes over to Open Office or LibreOffice? And I think the whole idea that people would believe this is absolutely ridiculous. Um, having said that, I personally think, and this is probably where I diver, uh, go separate ways from both of you two, I still believe there is a place for proprietary software. Um, not so much in the utilities market. I think proprietary software does have a place in the gaming industry, for example, where um, high production values um, that are demanded by, and I'm going to say that dreaded word, consumers, um, can't be recouped from an open source uh, ethos. You're uh, assuming you're talking about business model. I, okay, this is where I disagree with you. Yeah, sorry, so, yeah. shall, I just finish, shall I just finish what the bit, the bit I was going to say? I was just going to example something there. Um, I think you look at titles like uh, Grand Theft Auto um, that are demanded by the, the masses, as it were, the ones that people queue up outside shops to buy. Um, the production costs in relation to those projects and products are so immense that in order to recoup the, uh, the, amount, the massive amounts of money spent, a proprietary model has to be uh, considered. I think additionally, though, the proprietary companies are aware that the open source and being able to modify things and be able to take ownership of a game or a title is important because obviously some of these companies offer your own modding tools so you can build your own levels for certain games and things like that. So I think they do try to uh, incorporate that into some of their titles. But when you look at the open source uh, gaming platform, uh, for example, and the, the titles I've looked at over the last uh, couple of days, I personally can't see how, say, Grand Theft Auto, and that's just putting any old title out of the air, could be achieved within an open source project. I don't see how, when you're talking about bringing in celebrities into um, into these titles to do voiceovers or um, some of the advanced animations that are done in the studio with professional equipment, I don't see how this can be recouped um, for the creators via a, an open source uh, model. Maybe Roy or Gordon could example a, a way it could be, but uh, for me that's the sort of, sort of sticking point where I think there will always be a room for proprietary software. Um, yeah, well, we, you used the word professional a moment ago to say the studio, they work with pro professional software. Uh, and this is the interchange between words like proprietary and commercial and enterprise grade. Uh, or, you know, what you're trying to say sometimes is proprietary or something that's being controlled by a company. And you're also assuming that proprietary versus phrase and freedom means something to do with price. Uh, well, what you sort of insinuate here is that uh, the software being unavailable for access for inspection and audit uh, is something to do with the price. So you're saying is what you're saying is that it's it's a business model thing, but it's not really a business model thing. It's more of a development method. Uh, yeah, and, and what I'm trying to get is yeah, maybe a company like I don't know who I'm not sure who made Grand Theft Auto for argument's sake, but whoever it was, um, the closed source uh, model that they've chosen for their product, I'm saying is is the way they've chosen to that is how they recoup their money. Um, and the question I'm asking is not so much maybe whether it's yeah. closed source or open source. I'm yeah. asking how. These production value, these production costs. And when I say professional, I don't mean better. Yeah. I mean, for example, yeah. this podcast is done via radio microphones that cost twenty pounds, whereas in a studio for a game like Grand Theft Auto, the recording of the voice would be done with thousands of pounds worth of equipment with uh, proper sounds. Multiple, uh, they have multiple microphones. Do you know? Yeah, nice, yeah, things like that. Mm -hmm. But the uh, I just wanted to say it's it's very similar to a point raised by Gordon just a, a moment ago. It's to do with the uh, music industry, or not really the music industry, more of the recording industry, and they assume, and they want you to assume that if they disappear, there won't be any music, or there won't be any money spent on music. Now, the truth is, uh, people will usually spend money on something, and let's say they, they have a certain budget to dedicate to different parts of their lives, depending on how much they enjoy certain things and see the need to compensate or to have access to and if not the artist's songs, then something like a concert or a bar where you might go to drink while you're watching a certain artist you like. <clears throat> so 
you're you're sort of assuming that the uh, to develop a very expensive game, the only way you can ever do that is to go proprietary and to develop in this way. And we in the IRC channels in TechRights, we used to have a non-Microsoft employee uh, called Joe.